uh, nice to meet you, uh, Clay. Uh, I really appreciate that uh, you jumped to this call, and uh, I will be happy if you uh, share some uh, insights, some new experience with uh, my audience. So, welcome. Great. Thanks, Max. Great to meet you and glad to be on your podcast and hope to share something that will be valuable for the entrepreneurs that are listening. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, you can do it. Uh, my first question uh, will be regarding uh, your education and uh, why you decided to go to Purdue. I found information that you're a bachelor of arts in economics, uh, but uh, you're doing a uh, SaaS business. So how it's happened? Uh, what changed in your life? Why did you decide to start to become an entrepreneur? Yeah, you know, I've always loved entrepreneurship, um, but I went to school, went to college, got a law degree and an MBA, and had, I had a lot of student debt. And uh, I, I decided that at some point I decided, you know what, I can probably pay off my student debt faster by working in my own business than I can by um, working for someone else and getting a paycheck. So I joined up with my wife's two younger brothers. This was 18 years ago. And we started building this software company and for three years, it was the hardest thing I could possibly imagine. Every day was a fight for survival, and uh, we we didn't have we didn't have money. We didn't have an investor. We didn't have any savings or anything. We just had to work hard every day to try to pay the bills and make things work. Yeah, I uh, saw a uh, few from entrepreneurs that be entrepreneurs mean uh, be a firefighter. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, that first three years was, was very, very difficult and you had a lot of headache. Uh, but you also mentioned uh, issue regarding the money. Uh, what do you think money is the biggest problem for startups or no? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. It's, it would be easy to say, yeah, money is the biggest problem. But it's really not. Um, the biggest problem for startups is having the mental toughness to deal with everything that comes your way. Um, you know, every, when, when you're starting a business, every day there are forces pushing against you. There are challenges, there's, uh, you're trying to find customers, or if you get customers, they're complaining because your products and services are not quite right yet. And, and if you have employees, they're, you know, they're, they're doing things you would never do and you're frustrated with that. I mean, the, the problems just go on and on and on. And you're trying to, make enough money to you know provide for yourself and your family and you're also dealing with all of the different uh, doubts and concerns and fears that you have as an entrepreneur and so you have to have a mental toughness you have to have a a grit and a tenacity to to just keep going through all of those hard things it's why we call the company keep because the number one ingredient for small business success which is what we stand for is is that perseverance to keep going keep keep at it when things are hard you know as my dad says keep on keeping on you just you got to keep going and i really believe that's the biggest problem for entrepreneurs they, they we want to believe that oh if i had money then those problems would be solved no there's, there's new problems and i can i can tell you having been through all the stages of entrepreneurship money doesn't solve the mental problem you have to be on top of that mentally and that never goes away. There are always new mental challenges. So I believe that is the number one challenge entrepreneurs have to overcome. Uh, let's make a small step back and uh, talk a little bit about uh, Keep. Uh, what is its main idea and uh, what is unique of your companies? Because it's a very, very competitive market uh, when you have uh, really big players. So how you achieve your success? What do you do? Something what others don't do. Yeah. Um, well, Keep is CRM software, customer relationship management software. It helps our, our customers uh, manage their clients more effectively, find new customers, serve those customers, follow up with those customers effectively. Um, what we do really, really well is we help businesses get organized and follow up with their prospects and customers and then automate as much of their daily work as possible. And when you get organized and you follow up and you automate you grow and our, our job is to help small businesses grow that's what we do so what we do that's different than others is we have an all-in-one solution 
that really focuses on follow-up and automation. And there are so many ways that small businesses uh, stumble and, and fall because they don't follow up with prospects and customers. And it's because they don't have enough time and they don't have a system for it. And so things slip through the cracks and prospects and customers go unattended to and that causes the business to not grow. So we have an all-in-one solution that focuses on getting the more, getting businesses organized, following up, and then automating. Because as you know, as every entrepreneur knows, what you need is more hours in the day. You need more time. The thing that drives people, drives entrepreneurs crazy is that they, they don't have the time to do everything they need to do. And they start to, things start to slip and they start to make mistakes. And, and then you start to feel like, I just can't do this. So what, what, what Keep does is it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an assistant that just helps you to get a bunch of stuff done automatically so that you're freed up as an entrepreneur to do the things that matter most. Yeah, and yeah, I assume like a book author, uh, you personally should read a lot of uh, books. Uh, maybe you could recommend uh, some of your favorite books, what each entrepreneur should read. Yeah, so if you're in the early days of struggle and you're not, you know, you're struggling mentally, um, I talk about this in Conquer the Chaos, I give some good suggestions, so that's one. But the one that I read years ago that I love is called The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. It's a great book for entrepreneurs who are just, who are doubting and they're uncertain on whether or not they should keep going. That's a really, really good book. Uh, another, another book for entrepreneurs that I love is called The E-Myth, a book by Michael Gerber. Uh, that's a really great one as well. So Power, power of Positive Thinking, E-Myth, Conquer the Chaos, those are good ones. Okay, got it. Uh, what do you think, uh, what will be the SaaS trend in next year in 2020? You know, I think the big the big thing that, that people talk about is artificial intelligence. Um, I think that, you know, the, the intelligence of the software to know what, what needs to be done uh, to help out the user, guide the user. I certainly believe that's a big trend for us here at Keep. Um, but I think that's one really, really big trend that people are, are paying attention to. I think another, another one is voice. You know, I think there's a lot happening with voice and, and just making because we do so much uh with our phones and and you know SaaS is more about our our mobile app now than anything else um it just makes sense that we use our our voice use voice more and more in software yeah i am uh, personally a big fan of artificial intelligence i, I also have my own experience in uh, building artificial intelligence product but uh i have a really big concern regarding this trend because Startups mentioned that they already used uh, AI or will use AI, but uh, I think the biggest problem in this market it's not enough data. Mostly small mm -hmm. companies, little company uh, don't have capacity, don't have enough money for buy this data or educate system with this data. They can't buy uh, AWS cloud server for each day educated uh, these algorithms. What do you think? Maybe uh, could could it problem on this market? So. It, it will be trends for blah, blah, blah. <laughs> startups will say that uh, they use it. Or uh, it's really some moment when startups uh, really became to use AI in uh, their application. Yeah, it's a really great question. The, you know, the data is the thing that, that makes AI really work. And yet, a lot of times, um, you know, with business, things are so specialized that you can't, you can't necessarily go to a platform to get the data and have it work for your business. In some companies you can do that, but for small businesses and what we do, it, it's very personalized. It's, it's one of the reasons why we, why we do an all-in-one CRM system that has the CRM, the marketing, the sales, the payments, all of it in one solution because we can be much smarter in the software to recommend things to the customer because we have the, the, the data for the customer about their business. Okay, thanks. And uh, my last question uh, will be about uh, revenue. Uh, what do you think, uh, what is your advice for young entrepreneurs, for young uh, startups, uh, how, what they should do, what they shouldn't do for generate 10 million uh, revenue in next year in 2020? Yeah, so the first thing I'll say is a lot of times startups get so caught up in their product or service that they don't sell effectively. They don't, they don't sell aggressively enough. In the early days, you have to sell. You have to sell strong. You got to believe in what you're doing 
and sell hard. And when you have gaps in what you're trying to deliver, you've got to double down and, and over, over deliver um, even when it might be inefficient to do that. But you sell hard to get the customer, to get the revenue, and then to serve that customer effectively. Too often I see entrepreneurs who go out of business because they're, they're too shy. They, they're too bashful about selling and they're, they're afraid of all of the weaknesses and problems in their own product or service. So they're like, the, the way they sell is, I don't know, if maybe if you want this, do you, do you think you'd be interested? You know, no, you got to sell hard. You got to be convincing and persuasive. And then you have to stand behind that sale and deliver for the customer. So the one thing I would say that has nothing to do with 2020 or trends or anything, but I think it's really important for entrepreneurs is sell. You got to sell hard. Now, in terms of 2020, I think, you know, one of the big things for, for small businesses is being able to get leads that they can have conversations with. And I think um, you, using, using various sources to get leads so you can sell to your customers, I think is going to be more and more important. Entrepreneurs can't afford to be ignorant about how to get leads online. So if that's using Facebook and custom audiences to understand who your customer is, or if it's using uh, other forms of social media, or just you know simple pay-per-click advertising with Google AdWords, that sort of thing, you have to know how to find your customers online. And that is a skill that is worth investing in to know how do I find customers online? And then the piece that goes right with it is, how do I speak to the, the prospective customer effectively in writing? How do I, it's, it, you know, as marketers call it copywriting, but learning how to write to your prospective customer to persuade them to have a conversation with you is really important. So, so I guess if you said three things, sell, know how to find customers online, and then know how to write copy to attract them and cause them to want to talk to you. Those are skills that are worth investing in. What do you think is difficult to sell hard without a strong personal brand? Because, for example, uh, I found an uh, article on Wikipedia about you. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> for me, a very good indicator for strong sell brand. And uh, I have no idea how possible to sell without strong own brand. So what is your opinion about this? Um, is your question how to sell strong uh, is it how to sell strong when you don't have a brand yet? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, you create a brand by selling well. So you sell from the beginning. You know, when I was in the early days of our business, I was talking to my dad one day, this is 18 years ago, and he was telling me how sales were going. And I, I was responsible for sales. And I said, oh, they're not going well. And he said, well, tell me what you do. You know, talk to me about your, pretend like I'm one of your prospects. So I, I role played with him. I, I acted like he was a prospect and, and I, I told him, you know, I talked to him about our software services and, and he's, when we got done, he said, okay, you, can I give you some feedback? And I said, yeah. And he goes, sell. <laughs> he goes, you're not selling. You're just kind of telling me a little bit about what you do. You have to tell me why I should do it. You have to explain how my life is going to be better because I'm getting this product or service. And I started doing that and we started selling. And a lot of people don't want to go out on a limb and tell their customer how their life is going to improve, their business is going to improve by getting, their pro getting the product or service. And if you as the business owner don't have that confidence, then you shouldn't be in business. So sell or get out of business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I agree with you. Okay, so Clay, it seems like I don't have more questions. Uh, I really enjoyed this call. I really appreciate for you share these insights. Maybe